No commentator enhanced what we were seeing more than JR. Does he have no conscience? Does he have no heart? Do you have no soul? Jim Ross was the everyman watching along with us. It's me, Austin! Oh, son of a bitch! What? He was our voice, and that's why we trusted him. Eric Bischoff is a no good, lousy son of a bitch. Hey, hey, hey! So anyone Ross hated, we hated too. There were a host of wrestlers that got on a gym skin. That sick, hideous son of a... There it is! But today, we'll highlight those who JR despised the most. I think you're a sorry, low-down S-O-B. As we list the top 10 wrestlers, Jim Ross hated. Number 10, the Dudley Boys. The Dudleys found their groove in the WWF by putting people through tables. Table spots hadn't been seen much in the company prior to Bubba and Devon's arrival. The act of driving wrestlers through tables was something JR didn't approve of one bit, especially when it began happening to women, courtesy of the men from Dudleyville. <laughs> As a result, Ross began to refer to Bubba and Devon as the Damn Dudleys. Those damn Dudley brothers! You, the damn Dudleys! Those damn Dudleys! The power bomb! Terry right to the table! I can't say as I have any compassion at all for those damn Dudleys! It was a great way of getting the Dudley boys over his vicious heels. These damn Dudleys are getting just what they deserve! The damn Dudleys! And the damn Dudleys, they don't deserve, they don't deserve to be the WWF! Don't hit me, you old buzzard! Oh, uh -oh. what a disrespectful, no good, those damn Dudleys. Say it now! What? Come Say on, JR! Say damn Dudleys now! The fact table spots were new to the WWF at the time made their actions all the more devastating. But was almost euphoric just thinking about using that table. Well, he must have had a weird childhood, that's all I can say. Oh, yeah. oh, for God's sake, do it! Number 9, Tory. Even though JR showed sympathy for the women the Dudleys attacked, Jim wasn't shy in having a go at the ladies when they stepped out of line themselves. Such as when Tory turned on her boyfriend Kane to join DX in 2000. Following this, Ross proceeded to throw shade at Tory on a weekly basis, calling her a Jezebel and enjoying whenever she got her comeuppance. Here's Tory gonna get some wood tonight. Number 8, Stephanie McMahon. Stephanie also got the Jezebel treatment from JR, and it's no surprise given her behavior towards others, including JR himself. And that Jezebel running for her proverbial skin! What is that Jezebel Stephanie, doing in there? What are you doing in the ring? Oh, that's exactly what she's trying to do. Is that Jezebel? Uh -oh. She's a Jezebel, all right. Oh, come on, give me a break. This Jezebel wants to be the undisputed foe. It was another case of a heel preying on Ross, since it resulted in instant heat because of how much the fans loved JR. As well as calling her a Jezebel, Jim also had a few other names for Steph. I hate to say it, but she's acting like a little D. It rhymes with witch, and it starts with a B. She's wicked. This is a, a sinful woman, let me tell you. <laughs> a million dollar princess has Number 7, Michael Cole. Cole had the impossible job of filling good old JR's shoes after Jim's run commentating full-time ended. Pennsylvania. Oh! Drag your Yankee ass out of here to the back, cause I'm gonna go back to work. Get your ass out of the ring and back to the back. Thank you very much. This was put into storyline when Cole turned heel. In 2011, Ross was part of Michael's feud with Jerry Lawler, where Cole regularly made fun of JR. JR's barbecue sauce! Eh, it, it's slobberknocker good! <laughs> the two competed against each other in various matches and challenges. I'm gonna slam JR! What the hell? Where are you, are you kidding me? And he's laying those big right hands in. Michael Cole, you're a damn fool. The king beats you like a government mule.
And off, he's loosening it up. Jim Ross has been waiting a long time for this. Oh, he's whipping him. Cole was an unbearable heel, so it was great to see JR shut him up, creating numerous funny moments in the process. Cole trying to run like a scalded dog out of the coal mine. Oh. Ah. Cole is a pimple on the buttocks of life. <laughs> Tell you what, if I found something that looked like that floating in my pool, I'd punish my dog. I forgot about those ugly tattoos. You are, Michael, a rat bastard. It had to be. Number six, Paul Heyman. JR and King are wrestling's most famous commentary duo, renowned for their tremendous and hilarious chemistry. You could tell how good of friends they were based on their interactions together. In contrast, Jim's work with Paul Heyman was so good because of how much they disliked each other on screen. While JR's squabbles with King were mostly wholesome and lighthearted, the spats with Heyman felt bitter and hate-filled. The name of the show has nothing to do with extreme. Beating the, you're the beating the dead horse here, all right? Let's not talk about my horse or yours. By God, I know one thing. Stone Cold knows he can't beat Kurt Angle for the WWE title. Can you argue that point? Austin's going to get his ass whipped. It's by who? And he knows by Kurt Angle? Kurt Angle? By Kurt Angle? Don't get up Get out of your mind. Kiss my ass. Paul really knew how to push Jim's buttons. Bye bye, audience. Good old JR signing off after all this time. You know, you're sick. You're I'm not going to miss you at all. I hope a damn. But it was all in the context of the show since their bickering fit perfectly with the storyline at the time, as Heyman and the Alliance were trying to take over the WWF, which would have put Ross out of a job. It's been miserable working with you. Same here. Number five, Jerry Lawler. We touched on JR's banter with the King in our last entry, but we'll now highlight their work together in more detail by looking at some of the funniest arguments and interactions between the two. Ross was the perfect straight man to bounce off King's playful and perverse character. Truthfully, my brain is my second favorite organ. <laughs> oh, Lord. Hey, girls, I'm an organ donor. Need anything? Oh, stop it. Hey, this place is crawling with cops and these holes out here. You know, they're the receivers of swollen goods. Oh, King, for God's sakes. We saw the big tent last night. T-I-T. Will you stop that? You can't Terror? say you can't say tit on television. It's a Terry Invitational Tournament. Everything about her is nice. I'm talking Have about you her ever eyes. Seen a woman's breast I'm talking about her eyes. Are you that beautiful? Are you? What's wrong with you? The last time you saw a breast was in a Kentucky Fried Chicken box. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed to be with younger women, except when I drop them off at school. Well, I ain't going there. She might be a little old for you. She's in her early 20s. Oh, look at her bounce away. Man. What a little bitch. The wrestlers have to turn it on working 10 to 20 minutes at a time, but JR and King had to be entertaining for the entire two to three hour broadcast, something they did on a weekly basis, and it's why they're remembered as one of wrestling's greatest duos. I know his parents are close. I'd say like second cousins. Oh, stop. <laughs> Point. Uh, Rock has had a snap back there. They have some good Chinese hospitals here in New York. Will you stop that? Let me say xenophobic. Now oh! Rock getting whipped down like that government meal we talked about. How many mules does the government own? <laughs> what the hell? What were those bastards doing to Stephanie? I don't know. How do I know, Jay? Are you worried about his knee when he landed right on Triple H's head? Well, why don't you run down and give him mouth to mouth Sorry. resuscitation if you're so damn worried about it? Well, Say it, Jay. Our business is about to pick up. The don't be an idiot. What? I said, don't be an idiot. Look at this. There's the referee to put under oath. Good call, ref. Good call, ref. Number four, Eric Bischoff. Bischoff made JR's life a living hell in 2003, not only by firing Jim multiple times, but also by putting him in various matches. Bischoff messed with Ross as a way of getting at JR's good friend, Stone Cold. Jim responded by letting rip on commentary. Eric Bischoff is a no good, lousy son of a hey, bitch. Hey, hey, hey. What time is it? What time is it? It's time to whip his ass. <laughs> He's trying to run like a little scalded dog here. Bishop got just what he deserved to start the win. Oh, cold in his back. And he just went Bishop's ass like a government mule. Oh, good God. Oh, my God. What a shot. I'd like to see Bishop get every bone in his body broken. Tutsling the son of a bitch all the way to hell. Do it. Tutsling and Kane. Easy, JR. And during face to face interactions with Eric. I'm gonna sue your ass, you bastard! <laughs> Here's Eric Bischoff! Oh, hit the ball! Bischoff gets hit! He hit Eric Bischoff! That is not physical provocation! You are! 
one lousy son of a bitch. Oh, no. And you can take this job and shove it. Number three, Kane. JL's hatred of Kane began when the Big Red Machine set Jim on fire. After that, Ross wasn't shy in telling us how he felt about the seven foot demon. Set my big ass on fire. And I'd like to see Kane to walk outside the building and get his seven foot ass run over by a damn truck. Ross constantly referred to Kane as a hideous SOB, amongst other things. Oh my God! Is that a human? That hideous freak Kane! That sick, hideous son of a. There it is! Right in the face of this hideous, smelling monster Kane. It really got over how sick and twisted Kane became after he unmasked. He was on a complete rampage, which JR perfectly provided the lyrics for. That is one sick son of a bitch. Let me tell you. Meet this monster. Meet this innocent son of a bitch. Hey, oh, the red Terminator needs some steel, Kane. You dirty, no good bastard. You freak. You monster. Number two, Vince McMahon. JR was Vince's personal amusement toy anytime the chairman got bored and wanted a cheap laugh. Usually no one was laughing except Vince, since many of the segments embarrassing Jim made fans angry for real, thus putting more heat on McMahon in the process and adding more fuel to the fire when it came to JR's venom towards Vince. Feel as under the new door, driving up and in, new era rather. Here's a cover. That's a good side rushing leg sweep, which wasn't called, but be that as it may. Happened to hear a little bit of that commentary. Oh good, I'm glad you were watching. Did you learn anything about uh, holes and how to call a match? The egotistical owner of the World Wrestling Federation couldn't stand the competition, so JR disappeared. The egotistical maniac who owns this company, and he talks out of both sides of his mouth anyway. Look at him smile, <laughs> little swagger. There's big John Wayne and little John Wayne, and we swagger when we walk, because by God, we can. It's me, Austin! Oh, son of a bitch! What? McMahon's running out of here like a, like a scalded dog! <laughs> Number one, Triple H. As we've heard, JR liked calling people an SOB, but these words never hit stronger than when Jim said this about Triple H. You son of a bitch, don't What's you hit her? Don't you hit her? Triple H, where did he come from? That son of a bitch! Does he have no conscience? Does he have no heart? Do you have no soul? You son of a bitch! Do you realize what you've just done? Damn you all the hell, Triple H! You son of a bitch! Why, Triple H? You son of a bitch! Why? Tell me why I am reality. He's a son of a bitch if you ask me. Hey, hey, hey. Triple H was one of the most despised heels of all time. In no small part thanks to JR's commentary. Jim really got over how evil and sadistic Helmsley was. Being a despicable heel was enough for Ross to go in on someone. Jim, what are you doing, you idiot? What are you doing? And all of the things that Ric Flair represents, I am today. That's debatable. But as we've already seen, if a wrestler did something personally to Jim, JR became objectively biased towards the person in question. And given some of the things the cerebral assassin did to Ross, it's no surprise how spiteful he became towards Hunter. I think you're a sorry, low down S O B. And now, by God! And now! You don't, what are you gonna do now? You wanna be one of those champion Batista? Shut up, JR! Shut up! You wanna be the man! Often is kicking Hell's Leech! Somebody stop this! Damn Triple H! Damn his 
soul. It tossed off to the title. You bastard. He's going to run in hell for what he did here tonight. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out a similar video on Michael Cole's greatest one-liners. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.